going to ask you to join me in prayer. We're very thankful, God, for your word that comes to expand our understanding of who you are. We pray that not only this is an intellectual exercise that we enjoy, but hopefully this will change the way we live, we live the change we treat others, the, ch the way we love others, the way we forgive others. We pray that as we hope to expand our understanding of you, this will give us even more reasons to be thankful to you and to serve you with more devotion. As once again, we come before you th to this mystery of your wonderful and beautiful creation. Speak to us once again this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So one of um, our new church members, Dan Edwards, he comes to the first service. Uh, she, she, he shared with me on, over Facebook uh, a story that I think would be very good to begin this sermon this morning. And my own version of the short, shorter version of the story that Dan shared with me is about this uh, scientist who is talking to God. And he says, God, I, I, I have found a way to create life. I have discovered with my science the way in which I can create human life. And this time, I'm going to do it right. I have done all my testing, all my experiments, and I have it all together. I can actually prove to you that I can create life just like you. God hears his story and says, okay, well, let's, let's do it. And so as they began to both to grab a handful of dirt, then God says to the scientists, wait, 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 wait. If you're going to do this, you go and create your own dust before we can do this, you know? And um, I think that as, as we begin talking about this whole um, idea of science and faith and the reality that in many ways faith and science are more compatible than we think, um, it is important then to remember that God was never against science, as we mentioned last week. That, in fact, as we grow in our knowledge of God, that means that it's not only just our knowledge of the, of the heart, our knowledge of the spirit, but it's also we increase our knowledge of our intellect and of the ways God has made this universe work. So let me just remind you in that sense that from last week's conversation to we, we agree on certain, certain principles. And let me just begin here. When, when we talk about the conversation of faith and science, you can say that at the simplest form, um, faith and science focus on different things or on different questions. So for example, science is very interested in trying to answering the, the how, the when, and the what. So for example, science is interested in how did the universe come into being? When did it precisely start? Uh, and what force of energy created all of it? Faith, on the other hand, is interested in those questions, but its focus is more on the who and the why. Who created the universe, and why are we here on this universe? And so when we look at it from that perspective, again, we can certainly see a difference. Yet again, we can see also a point where maybe if we open our understanding Faith and science can at least begin to have some sort of a dialogue, especially when it comes to the idea of creation and the universe. And so what does that mean for people of faith now that we're about to begin the 21st century? What does that mean in the way we see faith and science as we're beginning to grow in our faith? Well, let me just begin with the beginning. As Christians, our understanding of the universe and our faith begins with a very important truth. That in Jesus Christ, God in Jesus Christ is the absolute creator of everything that we see and not see. You this morning heard the words from the book of Genesis 1 and the Gospel of John, verse 1, chapter 1, where it begins, in the beginning God created. And then in John it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And everything was created through that word. Now, for many people hearing these words, uh, this is enough. 
they don't need to explore anything else. Or as one of my Sunday school posters in my former church said, if God said it, that settles it. Okay? You've probably seen that too. But yet, somehow, that is not entirely satisfying to me. Because if you haven't noticed, I'm the type of person, I'm the type of person that wants more. And I want proof. I'm the one who's always wanting to ask why. And I'm the person that uh, wants someone to explain how everything works and, and wants proof. And, and, and if there's a conversation, I want to hear the argument. And I want to hear the person defend the argument, providing me all the argument. I mean, I, I, I'm the person that is not satisfied to the point that I sometimes I can be annoying to other people because I ask too many questions. And uh, I just want to remind you that in, a, in my former life, I was a frustrated lawyer. So I, I, that's still in me. I, I have to know how things work. I want people to convince me. And um, throughout history then, there has been this group of men and women who have dedicated their entire lives to discover the truth about our universe. And they have done many different things. They have, they have tackled this question by... Um, looking into the skies and digging, digging into the rocks and, and uh, searching for God to find an answer that will help them to understand how is it that this universe was created. Now, here is the thing. Up until the 1920s and 30s, almost every modern scientist stu studying the cosmos believed that the universe was eternal, meaning uh, it was without beginning and without end. Uh, now, if you hear it in those terms, you may, don't, may, may think that there's nothing wrong with that. But if you pay attention, that understanding that the universe was without beginning and without end actually comes to contradict the story that we just heard from Genesis, which basically says that there was a point where there was nothing, and God created something out of nothing. That contradicts directly that understanding. Because again, Genesis starts by saying, in the beginning, when? Which means that at some point there was nothing. Now, in the midst of all this controversy and this conversation of science and faith, came along this Catholic priest, a scientist. His name was Georges Lemaitre, uh, French, and he proposed in his theory and his scientific, scientific studies, he, he proposed what later was going to be known as the Big Bang Theory. And this is what the Big Bang Theory says. It says that the universe began at a single moment. And since that moment, it has been expanding. Lemaitre's theory establishes that the Big Bang, or explosion, took place around 13.7 billion years. And, um, and at that point when that explosion took place, the universe was this mass of heat, and it was nothing, but it was just a mass of heat. And because of that explosion, it began to expand, to grow. Eventually, the Earth began to cool off, and, um, and then after the cooling off period, um, protons and neutrons and electrons began to, to form, and eventually planets, our planet, galaxies, all of those things were formed. Now, when the scientists heard this theory of the Big Bang Theory, a lot of them were very skeptical of Father George because they thought that as a person from the Catholic Church, he was injecting his own understanding of the creation story in his scientific discoveries. So immediately they say, no. No, because you are a religious person, and I'm sure that you have an agenda to prove that Genesis is real. So it was not, uh, it was not accepted. After Father uh, Lemaitre came and put forth his hypothesis, other scientists then began to do research, and finally there was a breakthrough in 1929 with Edwin Hubble. You might be familiar with the Hubble telescope. Uh, in his studies of the Milky Way, um, 
he finally was able to, the, 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 to prove or discover that, in fact, um, the universe was indeed expanding. Um, and if the universe was indeed expanding, didn't that suggest that maybe there was then a beginning? So later, in 1964, there was this group of engineers led by Arno Penciast and Robert Wilson who discovered uh, what had been previously uh, known and ignored as the background radiation. Uh, and they not only, they it's not that they discovered the background radiation, but they were able to determine that this was the cosmic residue of the original very hot radiation created by the Big Bang. The two men received the Nobel Prize for their discovery, and after 1978, that they won the Nobel Peace Prize, well, no, not Nobel Peace, Nobel Scientific Prize, whatever it is. Uh, it is safe to say that uh, other scientists have adopted the Big Bang Theory as the um, accepted standard to begin to understand how the universe was created. Now, whew, for those of you who I lost five minutes ago, let me, just, let me just give you the Cliff Notes version of what I just told you, okay? The universe began as an infinite, dense, dimensionsless point of pure energy. 13.7 billion years ago, there was this big explosion that happened, and the universe uh, began to expand ever since. According to most scientists, this is how it happened. First, there was light, then there was a period of darkness, and then after, darkne uh, after darkness, 400 million years later, um, stars started to appear, and then uh, the galaxies and the planets were formed. After the 400, after the, um, then our sun was formed five billion years ago, and the earth four is four billion years old. Now, after the earth was created, uh, 100 million years into it, life began to sprung up, and it is believed that humans had all sorts of life. That's when all of us came into the picture. Whew. Okay. Now, here's the thing again. Rather than potentially be threatened by this theory and all the scientific discoveries, again, because of this theory, somehow again, religion, faith, and science were actually able to have a conversation. Um, and maybe, I don't want to say to be more respectful of each other, but at least to not be that suspicious of each other. At least if you, want, if you were people of faith and you wanted to continue your pursuit of science. Now, what does the Bible have to say about all of this stuff that I just told you? Let, uh, let me begin by a very important um, disclaimer about all of this. The Bible that you have in front of you on your pews, those scriptures were before modern science was developed. What this simply means is that there is an enor enormous quantity of scientific knowledge that the authors of the scriptures did not have. So, first of all, we have to understand that so that we will not be upset about the way the Bible explained how things were created. Okay, because um, the people back in those days were people who were educated. They were people who were, in some ways, smart and scientific, but they didn't know everything. They only knew what was available to them in their pres present time, not what we have now. So... We need to remember and not get caught up in that conversation because it's not going to lead anywhere. Now, no field has arrived at the point of understanding everything of how the universe was created. There is a lot of discoveries that need to take place in the, fi in the fields of physics, biology, astrology, genetics, genealogy, geology, I'm sorry. There are a lot of things that still we are discovering. In fact, if, if we were to rewrite today the story of the book of Genesis of how the creation took place, 
and we would incorporate our faith in all the scientific discoveries to put it in a way that it will make sense. People in 2,000 years reading our story will find things that needed to be changed, corrected, and completed. And then that people 2,000 years, another 2,000 years, the people who will be reading their story, they will say, no, you, were, you are missing this and this and this because we are in this continuing pursuit of truth, not just in faith, but in science. Because as I began my sermon this morning, we are growing in our faith and in our understanding of who God is. So that faith and science, you see, not only we can prove that the universe is expanding, but even from a spiritual perspective, God agrees with that understanding because we are supposed to be growing in our likeness to be like Christ. And that means just not in the way we are kind to each other, but also in the way we understand how everything functions. The Big Bang Theory makes it very clear that the, that the universe keeps expanding and is expanding. And in many ways, you and I should be expanding. And I don't mean your waistline. You know, I'm talking about we as in our knowledge. Okay? We're supposed to be growing. Philippians 1.6 says it very clear. There has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that God who started this great, great work in you would keep growing and bring it into flourishing finish on the very day Christ Jesus appears. In other words, we as people of faith continue to grow. If you, if you have gotten to a point in your life when you said, I don't need to learn anything else. I know everything I need to know. I understand everything. My friend, you are in deep trouble. Not only you will be contradicting what God is telling us, but also in some ways you are contradicting the laws of the universe that is calling to continuing expansion and expanding of what is happening around us. The Genesis account teaches us one thing that it needs to be very clear. God is the rightful ruler of all things, the owner of all things, and that all things are reflection of this creator. The Genesis poem that we found in Genesis 1 is intended to make sure that we all understand that there is this absolute truth that we have a God who created us. Just one. You see, when the people of Israel, when, when, when the people of Israel were chosen to be the people of God, they were surrounded by all this group of people who were believing a lot of different things. They were believing in, in, an, in, in, in animated things and animals, and they were calling all of them creators. They were, they were, they were saying that the, that the moon and the sun and the stars, that's where we came from. And, and, and God wanted to make it very clear that that's, that's not true. There is a creator who created everything that we see, but there is just one. And you see, um, because we were created by, by God, that means that God's, in some ways, God's DNA, that's, that God's same understanding of creation is also instilled in all of us. Which means that, you see, you and I were called to create. We were not called to destroy. We were called to create. We are creative. And God has given us that power to create. So, so, so when someone tells you, you know, you're good for nothing, that's not true. When someone tells you um, you're worthless, that's not true. Because, you see, God created you, and part of your nature is to bring creation, to create things. You see, what, what God is telling us, and that we need to learn about the creation story, is that you, God created in the midst of chaos. God brought order. And in the same way, in the midst of chaos, we are called into this world to bring order and cosmos. So, if you were to ask me, what do I think of the Big Bang Theory? Whatever, of course. Yes. Call it what you want. 
But the reality is that even as Genesis was written 3,200 years before the Big Bang Theory was suggested, both science and biblical scholarship agree that the universe had a beginning point. 3,000 years before chemists helped stated that human beings come from the same carbon compound found in the earth, the writer of Genesis told us that God took the dust of the earth and shaped it into a human being and breathed into it, into them, into them, the breath of life. You see, uh, I don't know, we might be discovering other things that we have not been paying attention and we will realize that actually our faith, our faith is a partner, not an enemy of science. When God created us, God said that everything was good and that as we were created, we are now then called to do good, just like God did. And so, that simply says to us this morning, in those places where, where you again may find confusion and chaos, bring, your tr bring the truth and love of Christ, just like God did. When we see places of hurt, just like God did, bring healing. In places of violence and despair, bring justice and bring peace, just like God did. And in places where we see that there is this harmony, bring symphony, the symphony of love, just like God did. And God says, you know, where there is sin, where there is an offense, bring grace and forgiveness, just like I did for you. This morning, we are just reminded once again that God created us and that because of God's love in creating us, we are also sent into this world to bring order into the midst of the crazy chaos that we see. Let me just finish with this. Galileo said once, mathematics is the language with which God has written the universe. Well, that, that's really bad news for those who are really bad with math. But, you see, God created math. God gave us everything that we have to understand the universe. And so I hope that no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, you will continue to pursue God and the knowledge of God so that just like our universe, we will continue to expand in what we know but also in what we can give to others so they will come to know God. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving us and inviting us to understand not just how the universe was formed, but most importantly, thank you for inviting us to be in a personal, loving relationship with you. I'm very thankful for all of us who are here because in some way or another, we're showing to you that we want to continue to grow, to expand our knowledge of who you are, so that, again, as we grow, we can give more, and as we grow, we can love more, and as we grow, we can serve you better, and as we grow, people can see you more in us. And so I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful. Because you have come and not just created us, but you have given us this universe to serve you, to love you, to unleash this creativity that you have given us to do good, 
And so I pray for our young people who are here, that as they continue to grow and develop, they will realize of their purpose and, uh, and their calling and the gifts that you have given them, that they will see that even going to school is not a waste of time, but it is a, an opportunity to grow in, in their knowledge of you. And for those who are a little bit older, God, allow us never to get to the point where we think that we know it all. Allow us not to get to the point where we think that we can't change. Allow us not to get to the point where we think that there's nothing else for us to learn. Keep us humble. Keep us close to you and help us. And thank you so much, Jesus, for giving us life. Help us to use it to serve you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.